All right, today we'll be going over how to change a blade or a saw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my blade gap from zero, go ahead and take it out to about 12 gauge right there. This is the handle that we're going to flip to lock the blade down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the blade down almost full stroke, and as the machine wants to bounce the blade back up, I'm going to flip this handle up like that, and I'm going to lock that blade down in there. This, this machine cuts like a pair of scissors, and the cut will travel from, from the left to the right. So you actually check the blade gap on this machine from the right to the left, letting the blade up. And, and I'll demonstrate that here in just a second as I lock it back. Go ahead and check the machine back off. Lock your key out so nobody can turn the power back on you. And we'll go ahead and we'll flip our, our guards up. Now, since we changed this blade, we haven't changed anything. Our settings shouldn't change. All we're doing right now is going back to check our blade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back over here, and I'm going to turn this back to zero so that I can check the minimum amount of gap there. And what I'm going to do is the segment that we just pulled out, I'm going to go ahead and raise the ram to be in that area so I can check it on that particular one. Okay, that's it right there. Take a feeler gauge, come down here, and where the two blades cross, where the upper blade, we're going to go ahead and check our blade gap. I've taken the blade to zero, and I've got a 2,000 feeler gauge. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to check where the two blades cross, where they meet together, that's going to be the point at which we want to go ahead and take our measurement. You should be able to slide your feeler gauge right down inside. And on this one, I can get two thousandths down inside of it. Okay. So I'll have my I'll have uh, my assistant go ahead, lift the blade up just a little bit. We want to check it in three or four spots. What we want to check it several spots down through here. We want to have that. Good. And it's going to be two to five thousandths uh, in that in that range right there. Um, let's get a close up of the uh, uh, adjuster bolts here. This uh, uh, plate here actually floats with this with the blade assembly. Okay. We have our, our uh, uh, adjuster nut here for the blade gap. If I wanted to take, this, take the blade in, I would loosen the jam nut, loosen this outer bolt. The center acts like a bushing. Okay. So what I would do is if I want to take the blade in, I will take this bushing and I'll turn it in. And then turning it in, actually forces this whole assembly in towards the cutting blade. If I want to pull the blade out to give myself more room, I'll loosen the outer jam nut, loosen the outer puller bolt. Then the center bushing, I will screw out. So I'm, in essence, I'm lengthening the bushing. I'm actually bringing it out further. And then when I tighten my puller bolt, it actually pulls against the bushing and pulls the blade back, and then I'll tighten down my jam nut. And I'll do that all the way across, starting from the right to the left. And I'll let, I'll let the blade up just a little bit, check it, let it up, check it. And I'll, I'll check this two to three times until I have a perfect, consistent gap all the way across. Okay, this morning we're going to be covering changing the blade on the U.S. industrial shears. Um, first thing you want to do when you get ready to change a set of blades is go ahead and get your tables out of the way. Uh, you don't want anything in your way. It makes it a lot quicker to adjust the blades and, and get them on and off if you take these tables out of your way. So we're we'll going to remove the first table.
to remove the bottom section, what we want to do is we want to go into the recessed holes and remove the double nut that's holding the blade, it's the bottom, the lower blade itself. Um, this piece, the chrome uh, lip here, actually floats as part of a section. Um, as soon as I get this off, you'll see how it connects up. We also have to take this side panel off to access the blade. On the back of the, after you get both the lock nuts off, there's a washer inside. And what you normally have to do is take a bar in and grab the washer and lift it out once you pull the bolt out to keep it from dropping down. The, uh, the blades are segmented, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slide this blade out from the side. Oh. I actually have to take uh, this uh, 12 millimeter Allen off right here to get, to get the blade out. We're going to go ahead and pull this uh, clamp off. The clamp actually keeps all the lower blades together, um, keeps them all tight because it's segmented. 
do is go ahead and pull it off. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and inspect the blade for any high spots, any gouges, and I want to go ahead and take that worn edge and grind it flat. I don't want any burrs, any high spots. When I go ahead and I put my blade back in, I want it to fit very closely. I want to fit, have a nice tight fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean this blade up. So after cleaning the blade, we're ready to reinsert the blade back into the machine. Um, I have flipped the blade 180 degrees uh, so that my edge that I was wearing on this side is now down to the bottom. And you can refer to your book on this. It, it has a page in there that, that shows you the different turns. Also, one thing to note that the bolt that mounts the blade is actually has a tang groove to it. The blade also has the groove. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you line these bolts up when you go back in with it and reinsert the tang back into your blades. Be very careful when you spin these bolts because if they get sharp, the edges will get sharp on these. If you're using an impact, it could cut you uh, pretty badly. So just wear gloves and, and be very careful when you're handling these blades. Reinstall my washer. Put on the first nut. All my bolts in, just put my washers on. Now I've got them in, I can kind of reach over the top, hold the bolt into place, keep it from moving out of the groove.
Okay, I've got them all snugged up all the way across. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my clamp back on so that I have all my blades tight together before I tighten them up. jam nut on each one of them and snug those down. After I get done with this, I'm going to go through and I'm going to check my blade gap. First thing I'm going to do is back it off, back, back the blade gap off about six thousandths, six to ten thousandths, and then measure, see what I have at that point. I don't, I want to make sure that I have my minimum blade gap set. And I like to have a nice, even blade, uh, blade gap all the way across 10 foot. 